The story you are about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts featuring historical characters, events, or places that has played a role in shaping history. Please sit back and listen as I recite this narrative for you. Patrick Wayne Kearney is an American serial killer and necrophile who preyed on young men in California from 1965 to 1977. He is sometimes referred to as the Freeway Killer, a nickname he shares with two other separate serial killers, William Bonin and Randy Kraft. Patrick may be among the most prolific serial killers in U.S. history, claiming possibly as many as 43 victims, according to law enforcement. Patrick Kearney is easily one of the most appalling serial killers of the 20th century. Men were being murdered in bunches from 1975 to 1977, dumped unceremoniously along the highways between Los Angeles and the Mexican border. He would lure young boys and men, ages 5 to 28, into his car. Patrick would then murder his victims, sexually assault their decomposing bodies, and dismember and scatter their body parts along freeways in California. This unspeakable act earned him the moniker the trash bag killer. He looked nothing like the stereotypical serial killer with his glasses and harmless demeanor. Wanted by police along with partner David Hill, who was never charged with any crime related to the murders, Patrick's reign of death ended when he simply strolled into the Redondo Beach police station and gave himself up. The California trash bag case officially began on April 13, 1975, when the mutilated remains of Albert Rivera, 21 years old, were discovered near San Juan Capistrano. By November, six bodies had been found in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Diego counties. The discovery of two more victims in March 1977 raised the body count to eight, and by that time, police had their pattern. All the identified victims had homosexual backgrounds. Each was found nude, shot in the head with a similar weapon, Several were dismembered or otherwise mutilated. Their remains tied up in identical plastic garbage bags. Patrick enjoyed a normal, stable childhood with his family in California. He was the youngest of three sons and was raised in a reasonably stable family, at least in comparison to those of many other serial killers. His early life was not without some trauma, however. A thin and sickly child, he became a target for bullies at school. In his teens, he became withdrawn and fantasized about killing people who wronged him. At 13, his father taught him to slaughter pigs by shooting them behind the ear with a pistol. Patrick instantly took a liking to the task and began killing pigs that weren't meant to be slaughtered on his own. It was the blood and the organs he liked so much. And when he thought no one was around, he would kill the pigs so that he could roll around in their intestines. After school, Patrick Kearney joined the Air Force. During his time in the military, he met David Hill. Though David was married, he and Patrick began a love affair. After Patrick's discharge from the military, the two moved to Culver City in California. A high school dropout from Lubbock, Texas, David Hill joined the Army in 1960, but was soon discharged on diagnosis of an unspecified personality disorder. Back in Lubbock, he married his high school sweetheart, but the romance was short-lived. In 1962, he met Patrick Kearney stationed with the Air Force in Texas, and their attraction was mutual. David divorced his wife in 1966. The pair would frequently argue. Eventually, David left and went back to his wife and Patrick would go out for long drives on his own, cruising gay bars in Southern California and Mexico. In 1962, Patrick Kearney picked up a 19-year-old hitchhiker on his motorcycle. After driving the young man to a secluded spot, Patrick shot him behind the ear, the same way he had killed pigs. After the victim was dead, he sexually assaulted his body. Patrick's next victim was the young man's cousin who had seen Patrick pick his victim up on his motorcycle. He realized that he could silence a potential witness and indulge his need to kill at the same time. The method was the same. He lured his victim to a remote area, shot him in the head, and assaulted his corpse. There was just one more victim that year, another teenage boy that Patrick picked up off the street. 
The next year, David left his wife again and returned to Patrick. The pair settled into a home in Culver City, California. The next murder wouldn't come until 1967 when they visited one of David's friends in Tijuana. Patrick couldn't resist the opportunity. He snuck into the man's room and shot him between the eyes with a pistol. He then dragged the body to a bathtub where he assaulted it and began dismembering it with a knife. He then pulled the bullet out of the man's skull with a knife and buried the body behind the garage before returning to California. There seems to have been something about Patrick's relationship with David that let him resist his urge to kill. So when David left once again in 1971, Patrick began looking for victims. By now, Patrick Kearney had refined his procedure. He began picking up hitchhikers, prostitutes, men from bars, and children as young as eight. Often, he would target people who bore some resemblance to the people who had bullied him in school. Once he had them in his car, he would drive with his left hand, making sure to keep to the speed limit to avoid being pulled over. Once he was sure no one could see the car, Patrick would shoot the victim in the head with his right hand. Leaving the body sitting upright in the seat to look like a passenger, Patrick drove to a secluded spot. There he assaulted the bodies before cutting them up into pieces with a hacksaw. The dismembered parts were then placed in trash bags and dumped in different places around the area, usually freeways. But while Patrick was careful about disposing of the bodies, he wasn't careful enough. Police were able to draw links between the body parts that began showing up on the side of the freeways and identify the victims. The identity of one of those victims, John LeMay, led police back to Kearney in 1977. Patrick's final victim was a young man named John LeMay whom he killed on March 13, 1977. LeMay came to Patrick's house looking for David who wasn't home and Patrick invited him to watch television. Without provocation, he then shot LeMay in the back of the head and later dumped the remains in the desert. They were found on May 18. Because LeMay had told someone he was going to see David, police soon turned up at their home and questioned them. Although they cooperated, the two fled to El Paso, Texas as soon as the detectives left. After a few weeks on the run, they gave themselves up on July 1 at the urging of their families. They had calmly walked into a sheriff's office in Riverside, California and pointed to their photographs on a nearby wanted poster. We're them, David said. David, who was 34 years old at the time, was eventually cleared of any involvement in his partner's crime and was released. Patrick, on the other hand, made a full confession to his crimes, admitting to a total of 28 murders. In order to avoid the death penalty, he agreed to plead guilty. He was charged with 21 counts of murder, and as agreed, he pleaded guilty and was given 21 life sentences. A psychiatrist who interviewed Patrick after his arrest determined that he had an IQ of 180, well above what's considered a genius. This could explain why he was able to get away with so many murders before he was arrested. He knew how to cover his tracks and avoid the police. Police are certain that Patrick was responsible for the other seven murders he had admitted, but they did not have the physical evidence to charge him, and furthermore, they were satisfied that he would be in prison for the rest of his life. An affidavit filed in the case states that a bloody hacksaw was found at the Kearney Hill apartment in Redondo Beach. The apartment also yielded hair samples and bloodstains that matched those of the victim LeMay, whose body, according to the affidavit, was discovered in a plastic bag taken from the Hughes Aircraft Corporation. Investigators believe that not only is Patrick most likely responsible for the 38 murders he confessed to, he could be responsible for even more. But the total may never be known. Some of the bodies were beyond recovery. In the meantime, Patrick is incarcerated at California State Prison, where he will live out the rest of his days. Hey everyone, I just wanted to express how grateful I am that you took the time to listen to my narration. 
Hopefully you enjoyed it. I am Twisted Mind and please enjoy the rest of your day. Salamat.